I just created an AI workflow for generating amazing zombie VFX that pretty much works automatically for every type of shot that you throw at it. It's also super flexible and with just a few clicks you can apply the effect to other areas of the shot or completely change the prompt to turn you into an old man, a Disney character or a raccoon. Yeah, why not? Raccoon. Uh, <laughs> oh god, that didn't work. For this workflow we are going to use Animate Diff in ComfyUI, which is by far my favorite interface for stable diffusion. It's node based and that means that every single node that you see here is a piece of code doing one specific task. And I know this looks complicated at first, but the installation process is really simple and you can find some great tutorials on installing it in the video description and on my Patreon. So once you have ComfyUI installed, you can simply download my workflow and just drag and drop that file into the node editor. And there it is, everything is set up for you. Now in your case some of the nodes might be missing but to get them you can simply go to the ComfyUI manager and click install missing custom nodes and install them from there. I also want to make sure that you have all the models that are used. For animate diff I use the stabilized high motion model but the other ones will work as well. Just download the model that you want to use from the links below and put them in your motion model folder in ComfyUI. Then restart ComfyUI by closing it as well as the browser window and start it again. And now we can start generating. So let me walk you through the workflow. Firstly, you want to go to the left and import your video. And I'm choosing two for select every end frame. And that means that we only use every second frame of the video and the missing ones will be interpolated at the end, helping us achieve higher consistency and save a lot of time. Next, I want to set my total frame number and remember, because we are only using every second frame, the final video will actually be double that number. I then set my resolution and I chose a pretty low one because I don't have the best GPU, so you might be able to go a lot higher here for an even better effect. We only want the effect to happen in a specific area, in my case, the face. And using this node, ClipSec, we can actually have AI create a mask for us automatically. And you just need to type in a prompt for the area that you want to create a mask for. You see when I type in person, it selects my whole body. But when I type in face, it does a pretty good job of only selecting my face. If you want your effect applied throughout the whole clip, you can connect this mask to the set latent noise mask node. But in my shot, I actually wanted to transform into the zombie and that's why I created this optional blend effect. It just creates a bunch of black frames and then you can use this node here to blend between these black frames and the mask. And in my case, I chose linear interpolation, a transition start index of zero because I wanted the fade to start right away. And below that, you can set the duration of the effect. If you want to use this fade effect, make sure to connect its mask output to the latent noise mask instead. Next, you can choose a model under load checkpoint and I'm using, I can't believe this isn't photography, but any stable diffusion 1.5 model will work. Of course, you can also use LCM models or the LCM LoRa for much faster generations. Next, fill in your positive and negative prompt, go to the animate diff loader and select the motion model. And now let's set up the control nets. I'm using DW pose estimation for open pose with a high strength and you can see how well it tracks my movement here. I'm also using a canny with medium strength just to add some of my facial structure back into the generated image. Feel free to play around with the settings or even add more or different control nets. I'm only using two because of my lower VRAM, but you might be able to use more for an even better effect. You can also play around with the settings in the sampler, but the most important one is the denoise strength. Because this is basically the strength of the whole effect. Lower values will give you a lighter effect, more like makeup in my zombie case, and higher values will completely transform you. Finally, the rive node is set to interpolate every second image, giving us the original frame rate. And and in the output node we can give our final clip a name and change the output format. So now let's hit Q prompt and wait for our shot to render. Now like I said this workflow can be quickly adapted to generate other things than just faces. And for the final shot I also wanted to generate a, a wound from the zombie bite on my hand. So I went back into the mask group, changed the clip sec text to hand and the prompt to wound, bloody hand, zombie bite, blah, 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 and generated another version of the shot. I edited them both together and this is the final shot.
But enough with the zombie stuff, let's say we want to turn ourselves into a Disney character. For this I go back to mask, change it to face, load this Disney Pixar model as my checkpoint, change the prompt and re-render. You see the possibilities of this workflow are endless and I can't wait to see what you will create with it. Make sure to subscribe for more AI visual effects tutorials and check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much and see you next time.